Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. This is your host, Howard Fox. The Outdoor Adventure Series celebrates individuals and families, businesses and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration and enjoyment of the great outdoors. Our guest today is David Young. David is a Colorado-based freelance writer specializing in outdoor adventure, public relations, and the production of creative custom content. He's also an avid skier, fly fisherman, mountain biker, golfer, and which is and what is near and dear to my heart, he's a lover of fine whiskey. We're going to talk about that. David, it is a pleasure to have you join me on the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Fantastic. And, and for our listeners and the my usual spirit of full disclosure, I have gotten to know David and learning more about uh, him and his work through our uh, mutual membership to the Outdoor Writers Association of America. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that. But David, first off, why don't you share a little bit about your background with our audience? Yeah. So my background is um, in journalism, and I, I started out as a reporter. So spent more than a decade in, in daily newspapers writing a little bit of everything from sports to government to at one point I was even a beer, bikes, and bands reporter, if you can believe it, kind of doing a little bit of everything. So that's kind of where I cut my teeth writing and I loved it, really enjoyed it. But, you know, the newspaper industry over the years has kind of, you know, gone south a little bit and it, it's become difficult and a lot of closures. So I migrated into public relations as many journalists have done over the years. So I went into PR and I did PR for uh, local government as well as some private PR with some outdoor companies over the years and uh, really enjoyed that. But the missed the writing aspect, you know, doing PR is a lot of fun, but it's not the same as, as writing. So I eventually migrated back to writing and started doing, just opened up my own freelance writing company, David Young Communications, and have been doing that. And that's been going really fantastic. And I've been able to kind of marry my love of the outdoors with my writing skills. So I try to focus on uh, things that, that I would like to read and things that I also like to do. So a lot of that involves, like you mentioned, you know, backpacking, hiking, biking, fishing, skiing, anything outdoors, you know, here in Colorado, we have, but we're fortunate that we have a little bit of everything. So on any given day, I love to go outside and, and, and just kind of stay moving. And if I can write about it, all the better. Fantastic. And you know, as I was listening to you, when you first, when you said, you know, uh, about the journalism and the uh, right and working for newspapers and, you know, the, the, the bands. And, and I know in uh, some of the notes from your website, as I was doing my research, you did some writing or reporting for the Denver Broncos. And, and I'm thinking this guy's got what a life. And, and, and of course you're in Colorado, which. You know, I used to write my book reports when I was in elementary school about Colorado. I don't know why I did it, but I did it. And I remember getting letters and a whole bunch of travel outdoor related literature from the state of Colorado. And so it's definitely has a place in my heart and and I'm, I'm just a short drive from Nevada. So that's not too bad. Did you, were you born and raised in Colorado or did you go to school there? Where are you originally from? Yeah, so I was born in Denver. Natives of Colorado these days are are becoming more and more rare because, like you say, the word is out. It is a wonderful place to live, and more and more people have been moving here over the years. But I was born in Denver, grew up in Aurora, a suburb of Denver here. Oh, yeah. And I grew up doing, yeah, right right there near Denver. I grew up doing a lot of the things that I write about now, you know, grew up mountain biking and, and fishing and hiking and camping and kind of grew up in the Rockies and just fell in love with the outdoors. And then my father worked for the uh, the oil industry. So in high school, I actually moved to Texas. So uh, okay. kind of the, the exact opposite of Colorado in some respects. So I lived in West Texas and Midland for a while, and then also in Houston. So kind of two extremes of Texas. And, and, and I enjoyed Texas. There's some fantastic people down there, very friendly, some great food. But when it came time for college, I, I wanted to get back to the mountains. And I specifically looked at my colleges kind of based on honestly like the best skiing of course. Was kind of looking for great places to to get outside so came back to denver that kind of felt like home 
attended the uh, University of Denver and uh, majored in journalism and English. I've I've always loved reading and I, I, I've, I've liked writing as well. And I thought that, you know, a natural way to kind of make a living at that was, was newspapers. So <clears throat> right out of school, went into working for a daily newspaper in Southern Colorado. And yeah, things kind of went from there. And, and over the years, just kind of continued writing. And I've been very fortunate. I have a lot of friends who, who, you know, went to school for writing and, and I'm one of the few who am fortunate enough to still be able to do it. it it's a, it's a hard industry sometimes to make a living at, but I, I really love writing and I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm able to, to do it every day. You know, I, I love that. And you know, one of the things I find very interesting and, and, and you hit this right, right on a bullseye, you know, timing and place are oftentimes very crucial to our success. I mean, you, you grew up in Colorado, you have access to all of this wonderful outdoor activity and, and, and the fact that you were doing it all from the very early age, hiking, fishing, biking, skiing. And I, I imagine you were on ski patrol somewhere in one of those mountains. But, uh, it, what I love then is this kind of taking this love and beginning to discover ways to continue to make a living because you're right. I mean, the journalism, the newspapers, it, it's really have gone through a lot of changes over the years. Mm -hmm. When you began to explore outside of journalism and to put your own shingle on the door as a freelance writer and, you know, starting this agency, had you begun that process while you were working or did you basically say, you know, something writing's on the wall, I'm going to leave or take a package and I'm going to, I'm going to go make this happen. How'd you do that? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, growing up and, and in school and college, there was never like a freelance writing class available to me. You know, it, it just was something that like, wasn't really on my radar. I, I always felt like you had to get a job. Uh, at a newspaper or at a magazine or writing books or something, kind of one of those avenues that you traditionally think of. And I'm really glad that I worked for newspapers as long as I did, because it did really hone my skills and it developed my writing skills. And I learned a ton. And then to kind of be able to flip and do the PR side, that kind of taught me a little bit about how to, to market myself. Like I was on, I was putting out press releases and I was pitching stories to writers and, um, kind of learning the ins and outs of how that worked from the PR side. But as I was doing it, you know, I was thinking I was pitching stories to people who, who I didn't feel like were as, as a good a writer as I was. And, and I thought, you know, I could actually do this story better. So that's what I did. I started just doing it myself and I, I went out on my own and I, I, I fortunately, because of my background and my years in the newspaper and PR, I have a lot of contacts in the industry. I have a lot of people that I, I can reach out to and, and work with and know, and I just kind of, I know how to pitch a good story and how to write a good story and kind of marrying those two together again with the, the abilities and the skills that I have with my ability to go skiing, to go biking, to do those things. It makes for sort of a, a unique niche and, and combination that I found that has been really helpful in kind of setting out on my own and starting my own company. Very good. You know, I'm curious as you, <clears throat> We're describing this, you know, again, this transition. One thing that was coming to mind is David, you need to write a course on how to become a freelance writer, how to promote yourself. And the reason I say this, I'm a career changer. Okay. I, I was in, in it, I, I did that because it was like the last thing on the list and I was offered a job. I hated it. I mean, there was aspects of it I liked, but at the end of the day, sure. that was totally not me. And so I now am a recovering IT business consultant. Okay. And so going into coaching, it was logical for me. So I do career development coaching. However, no one ever told me when I was going through coach training and getting my master's, here's how you start and run a business. And so. Mm -hmm. I think, and I'm, and I'm curious, had you ever thought about taking this background that you have and this passion for the outdoor space and the writing to teaching other people how to do this? I was just curious about that. Yeah. You know, I really have, it's, it's funny you mentioned that, you know, the, 
Outdoor Writers Association is having their upcoming conference in in Casper here this coming, I guess it's this year now. Oh yeah, uh, I'll be there by the way. I will be there. Yeah, I look look forward to seeing you. I actually submitted teaching, teaching a course, an idea along these lines in terms of like how to teach. And obviously a lot of the folks there are already experts, but it, just in terms of like how to, how to do a good pitch, you know, having been on both sides of the, of the coin, having received hundreds of press releases as a reporter, and then also sending them out and writing them as a PR professional. So kind of, you know, having that dual insight into how to find that sweet spot for pitching stories and coming up with great story ideas there. So it is something that I've thought about and I agree, like for a local college course, you know, or something, it would be ideal to have in addition to, you know, your AP style and your, you know, all those things that are foundational, how to look outside the box, how to, how to kind of consider other avenues such as freelance writing to, to, you know, consider and to follow. And like you say, there's so much that goes into that, that, that I think people just don't even consider it's not even on the radar starting out. So that, that is a great idea and something that I have thought about potentially may pursue in the future. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We'll see where that goes. Yeah. As you <laughs> then kind of transition, transform your career into this freelance work, and, and you have all this background, again, the fishing, the skiing, et cetera. And by the way, I will say on your website, there's this wonderful shot of you holding, I, I'm thinking that's trout, big trout. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's a, the, a big rainbow trout. Yeah. All right. I love that. By the way, that's the banner image for our podcast. So I want that image, by oh, the way. <laughs> Normally <laughs> yeah. I would go to the website, right click, save, save image as, but I think you, you've got that locked down. So that's the one we want for our banner. Yeah. All right. And I yeah, want other pictures, sure. by I'll the way, and we'll get to that. Uh, you're going to find, by yeah, the way, I'm yeah. a very opportunistic podcaster. Uh, I'll tell you what I want. Nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you're developing now this career as a freelance writer and you've got these topics, was there any desire to niche down into, I mean, you could spend a lifetime talking about fishing and trout and fly Mm -hmm. fishing, spend a lifetime in skiing, mountain biking, et cetera, running, trail running. Mm -hmm. Had you kept it kind of broad? Do you have any thoughts on niching down further or focusing more on product where's your thoughts around i mean this very broad areas of expertise that you have and how do you mm-hmm. decide what you're going to write on and who you know or what's going on right now yeah you know when i started my business i sat down and, and tried to consider what i wanted to write about you know and and i do have with my background a wide range of, of different things that i can i can focus on for sure and Actually, starting out, I wasn't even solely focused on just where I'm at now with kind of outdoor adventures and sports. I was, I was even broader than that. So for me, this actually feels somewhat niched down to kind of just focus on, on the, on the things in the outdoors that we've noted. But within that, I, I find that I kind of naturally will flow seasonally from one of those topics to the other. So in the winter, I find for this, for instance, right now I'm working on a, backcountry skiing stories so and some more snowshoeing stories so the fact that it's winter here in colorado we've got snow now i kind of just by nature the the fishing stories tend to tail off a little bit and i tend to focus more on those snow sports you know spring and summer you know maybe more fishing more biking some of those more summer centric stories i tend to focus on so I do kind of like float in in and out of niches a little bit just based on seasonality and what is easier to write about at the time, I guess, you know, you can write about any of this year round, but obviously some of these sports are, are a little bit affected by the, the different seasons. So, and in terms of how I determine what story I want to write about or what I want to do at any given time, it's really, I, I try to think about like what I would want to read. So, you know, I, I, like I noted earlier, I like to read and I read a lot. So as I read these different publications and, and authors that I admire and things of that nature, I try to like focus on what, what's missing or what, what's out there that I can fill that niche that others haven't written about. And that's what I try to go and do. I try and think about what would I want to be reading? And then that's the story that I'll pick or oftentimes what, what do I, what do I do that nobody else can do sometimes 
that I can write about for a publication. So, you know, we were talking earlier about how for newspapers and magazines, sometimes there's been some some hard times and, and shortening of staff and hours and things of that nature. But I found that that actually creates an opportunity for freelancers because they're looking for more stories and they're looking for more content and ideas. And obviously, especially with the internet these days, there's no lack of opportunity for bylines. There's, you know, endless need for content. So it's just finding that right, that right niche and that right story to fill at the right time. And like you say, you're, you're good to go then. Okay. What are some examples of your writing and your unique spin to it? Because I, I can <clears throat> go to a fishing magazine, Trout Unli- I think it's Trout Unlimited or a magazine, the yep. journals. I go to Field and Stream. I can go to a hunting magazine and talk about the latest place to go hunting, the how to find the perfect spot to go fishing, the how to, you know, what's the latest technology in, sh- in snowshoeing. As you begin to explore these topics, because they're ones you're interested in, I love the fact mm-hmm. that you're kind of a seasonal guy. But mm-hmm. once you get this inkling, here's an idea that I want to pitch. How is it that you're adding your spin so it's not just like everybody else? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it it varies from story to story. I think that sometimes just my ability to do certain things really helps. So, for instance, this weekend I'm working on, I mentioned that backcountry ski story. It's about a, it's actually about a backcountry ski patrol. So rather than just write a story about this backcountry volunteer ski patrol that goes out and patrols this area, I'm actually going with them. So I have the ability to get out there with them, to follow them, to kind of do more of a slice of life, you know, and actually spend time on the mountain with them, getting photos, talking to them, kind of witnessing and experiencing what they experience and not have the whole deeper, richer level to the story than you might otherwise get with just a, you know, over the phone interview or even an in-person conversation, you know, kind of spending a day in there too sometimes really helps kind of add that extra layer. So something like that is often a way to kind of put my own spin on a story. Another example, I recently did a story for Gear Junkie on how to mountain bike some of the world's toughest trails solo. So I actually went out to Moab and rode the whole enchilada, which is one of the most famous. It's, it's such a fun trail. It's, it's oh, amazing. Wow. But I rode this trail on my own. It's like a 20 plus mile trail through the desert, you know, I just rode it solo, fantastic day. And then I wrote a story about it and I, and I gave people the, the information on how they can get to this point if they want to do that themselves. You know, I think a lot of times, even for experienced mountain bikers, the concept of riding solo can be a little scary so i was able to kind of give some tips some tricks some information on how to kind of like get over that hurdle and go do something like that yourself so that teaching aspect or that that narrative or kind of experiential aspect of the story is is one way that i try to kind of put my own personal touch or, or flavor on it a little bit okay very cool i i mean getting on a bike and riding 20 miles i can do that in a heartbeat Getting on a on a mountain <laughs> bike and riding out in the desert, I don't. I think that twenty miles is probably going to seem like more like one hundred and twenty miles. But that's just yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I have to ask. There's a question I'm going to ask you. It's about where you live in your home, and it has to do with toys, because I just could imagine you've got a lot of toys. Just given your this full breadth of your yeah. interests, we'll get to that. But yeah. I'm curious. <laughs> With the, you know, the product producers, you know, whether it's bikes and snowshoes, backpacks, I mean, I have this backpack that actually fits me. I'm a big guy. You know, I probably could stand to lose about 50 pounds, but I'm still a big guy. And so there's backpacks I can't even put on because I can't get it around my waist. So I know there's uh, producers out there that that have gregory's the one that comes to mind they have a backpack i can use got the bladder etc do you have product producers and it really doesn't matter what what uh sport it is that come to you and say hey david we've seen your work we've read your work we'd like for you to write an article for us about a particular item do you have folks like that coming to you 
Yeah, I, I do. One of the, one of the cool parts of my job is, um, I, I am out in the field a lot testing gear. So I do have companies that will send me their products, will send me their gear to, to test out and to, to write a story about, to write a review about. I've been uh, working with Gear Junkie a lot recently, and and I really enjoy. I, like you say, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge gearhead. I have a ton of toys, a ton of gear, way way too much probably. But yeah, I will get I will get sent products to to take out and to test out and try and see how they work, and then I'll write a story about it and let let readers know how it works. You know, give them a, an honest assessment of of what of what I think of of the product and and how it works. Yeah. Okay. When you produce this piece for the company, what else is included in this process in addition to just your words that you're providing to them? Well, are you referring to the company or the publication? To the publication of this piece. So again, I'm very much a visual guy. I love pictures. So not only do I want to see, you know, you breaking apart this product and here's all the features functionality here's how it's used here's what it looks like how it's used here's other people using it and here's you know things like that yeah definitely you know i definitely put the product through its paces and we'll we'll test it out you know for for instance i have been testing some some tents for msr msr had some new ultralight tents coming out for 2022 and i've been taking those out in the field and and really putting them, I, I took one out a couple months ago, actually in a, in a snowstorm and tested it out and, uh, really put it to, to its limit. And when I do that, you know, I basically try to, again, try to get in the head of a reader. And since, since I am a reader in a lot of senses of these things, I know the details, I know the features, you know, like what, again, like with these like ultralight tents, like I personally am a ultralight backpacker or long distance backpacker. So. I know what it takes and what, what that gear needs to be able to do for those readers on the trail so that when they're sitting down and, and trying to decide between, you know, which, which, which piece of equipment do I want to purchase to take with me on my next trip, you know, they're able to have the insight and information to, to make the best choice. So yeah, that, that includes a lot of description, a lot of testing it out. And then like you say, I, I do take my own photos, so I'll take out of my, my, my Canon, my DSLR and try to get some high quality shots in the product at a bunch of different angles and, and just test it out to let, to let people get a good look at it and to, to, yeah, to, to have a better idea of what this product is that, that's coming out. Again, I've, I think with my background, I've, I not only write this, but again, I'm, I, I've read hundreds of gear reviews, so I know what goes into it. And, and I've used so much gear over the years that that I know what works and what doesn't. And I have that expertise to provide those readers with that information, which is a lot of fun. I enjoy okay. it. Okay. If someone were coming to you and, and I'm thinking, and I'm not being opportunistic here, I could, but I'm not. If someone <laughs> comes to you like me, I, I'm, I'm 60 years old. I, I do like to get out for hiking. I, I don't relish the idea of hiking over big rocks that give me a nice trail that I don't mind a little bit of obstacle because I want to stop and I want to enjoy the view, the moment, take pictures, wait, listen for birds, for animals. So I'm not out there to prove myself or to go beyond. Mm -hmm. I'm open to, to going beyond my comfort zone a little bit, but then you have somebody maybe he's a little bit more experienced, but they're not ready to go out on that 20 mile bike ride in Moab like you did. And then there's yeah. the world-class athlete. Okay. And I would just getting to know yeah. you, I would say you're, maybe you're not competitive. Maybe you are, you're close to you're, you're definitely more than that medium guy, you know, to kind of a, you've been there doing it in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Are you, do you, have you thought, or have you kind of helped those different classifications of athlete or you know, weekend athlete prepare for these kinds of adventures. Yeah, it, it depends on the audience. Certainly, you know, depending on the publication, the audience. You know, if I'm if I'm doing a gear review for for Gear Junkie, obviously the readers for that publication are going to be a little bit more outdoor savvy. They're probably pretty familiar with 
with gear and what they're looking for, you know that they're going to that publication and that site to to get the the nitty gritty details. And I can get a little bit more heady and technical with some of the language and whatnot that I write for sure. But at the same time, you know, I, I write for Snowshoe Magazine, and sometimes you you do you know kind of introduction type stories or you know more basic. 101 type thing. So helping people kind of learn the ins and outs of snowshoeing or fishing or, or whatnot. I, I recently just did a article for the fly fishing film tour on uh, the basics of how to start tying your own flies. So, you know, it's winter now, people are inside more and that was a very basic, it wasn't, it wasn't super technical. It was just like, here's the basic materials you need. Here's how to get started. Here's some easy fly patterns to start with. So that was a fun one to write, but it certainly was geared towards more of the beginner and, and a lower barrier to entry for somebody to kind of figure it out. So, yeah, I love writing stories for the entire spectrum for somebody who's, who's just getting into it and trying to figure out how to, how to do a certain sport to somebody who maybe has done it for years. And is, is you know, you never stop learning, you know, even, even myself, I've been doing it for a while, but I'm always trying to learn and improve and, and get to that next level. So I think that there's certainly opportunities to write a wide spectrum of those type of stories, which is a lot of fun. I like that. Okay. Where has the most, well, that's not the best way to start the question. In your experience, having been out in the outdoor adventure, are there some spaces, maybe it was Moab, uh, that 20 mile ride that you were like, wow, this, I can't believe I'm here. This is the most wonderful place. Do you have any experiences like that? that just kind of blew you away. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the whole reason I kind of became a freelance writer and, and started doing this is because I, I wanted more of those experiences. I wanted to get out of the nine to five grind, work for the weekend and, you know, be out doing that on a Wednesday, you know? So I, that, that's what I kind of look for are those experiences and off the top of my head, you know, I recently just past summer, I, I took a, I, it was for a story I was working on about fly fishing and I backpacked about 12 miles into the back country of Rocky Mountain National Park, you know, just pristine wilderness, beautiful area. I was fortunate enough to procure a back country site and went back there and, and camped a couple nights. And from my campsite, I would even go up higher. So I was at some really high alpine lakes fishing and, and hanging out. And, and there was one night where I just put, put the pole down, you know, stop everything and just sat by the, you know, amazing high alpine lake, just kicking back and watching the sunset for, for a couple hours. And that, that's one of those moments that you just kind of live for and you never forget. It was just this gorgeous, you know, super quiet, super still summer evening, high up in the Rocky Mountains next to a glacier lake it was just it was gorgeous and it's something I'll, I'll never forget and that you know that i'm very fortunate that i'm able to kind of do that for for a living now and get out and enjoy those experiences that's certainly for me that's what it's all about for sure fantastic now by the way here's my opportunistic self showing up if you happen to have a <laughs> photo about that experience that can you like to yeah. share yeah love to have that for our show notes and I was actually thinking of kind of ask you next is, are you more of a sunset kind of guy? Cause you, obviously the whiskey uh, or the sunrise <laughs> yeah. with a cup of coffee for both. Yeah. I, I love, I love both. I, I recently outfitted my, my truck. I, over the uh, pandemic, I, I did a truck build on my, my uh, Toyota Tacoma. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of like live in the back of my truck now if I need oh, to. Yeah. And I love being out in the middle of nowhere and being kind of tucked into my truck bed and watching the sunrise that that's pretty amazing and that's really fun i did that in moab each day i would kind of like wake up with the sunrise over the red cliffs and it was gorgeous but i think if i had to choose two i would probably say sunset because i just i love especially being in the mountains in colorado just watching the sunset to the west you know and seeing you can get like purples, blues, oranges, everything, you know, they say God's a Bronco fan because the sunsets <laughs> are, are, you know, blue and orange out here. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty spectacular. And it's something that, that, uh, yeah, it, it can be pretty bet taking out here for sure. I love it. All right. So you've got the sunset. Let's talk whiskey for a second. What's your yeah. preference <laughs> around the whiskey? So 
I, I'm a big I'm a big Scotch fan. I went to Scotland and I did a tour and and went to all the distilleries and tried everything and and I've I've always liked the Lagavulin. Lagavulin is probably okay. my favorite Scotch. If if I had to hand down choose something. But that being said, I also then went to Kentucky and toured all the distilleries in Kentucky. So I've kind of seen both sides, and I love American bourbon. I love, you know, probably like Blanton would be my favorite, you know, sort of sipping sipping whiskey here. You know, um, right now I'm drinking some uh, Widow Jane. I'm not familiar if you're I'm not sure if you're familiar with Widow Jane, but uh, it's out of New York. It's, okay. it's fantastic. It's a ten year. It's it's just it's like drinking a smoky fire in a glass it's just it's fantastic so yeah in these cold winter nights here in colorado i'll get a fire going in my fireplace and and pour myself a nice dram and just kind of kick back and it always helps helps you warm up for sure when it's when it's a little bit cold out you know you and i are going to do some damage probably with a bunch of others when we get to casper wyoming later this year and yeah, i have I'll, had lagavulin so that is a very fine whis- uh, whiskey so it's, yeah let's talk a little bit about your the toys now i i, I would imagine you're not the condo guy because you probably need a garage to for all your outdoor gear and what are some of the yeah. toys that, that are in that and we're not going to tell people exactly where you live because we don't want any visitors, but what are some <laughs> of the toys yeah. that are readily available yeah, to you? Yeah, probably one of my, I've got a ton of fly fishing poles, a lot of fly rods. I have a nice, my specialized 29er stump jumper mountain bike is, is one of my prized possessions for sure. I have a ton of camping gear, like just, yeah, I, 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 I like to do like at the long distance backpacking and stay out as long as I can. So. I recently got the Big Agnes Ultralight Fly Fly Tent. It's uh, okay. UV. It's it's been fantastic. It's it's like it weighs less than a pound. It just it's a huge game changer. That's been fantastic. I got I I, I yeah I have tons of cooking gear and stoves and things of that nature. So I I'm trying to think what else of, of note. I it's mainly just a lot of backpacking, fishing, and and camping camping gear okay. and, and bike gear and stuff. So yeah. Okay. I, I can imagine there's maybe, maybe there isn't a significant other in your life saying, why do you have all this gear here? We don't have to go down that path <laughs> that we don't need to do that. As you look back in your career, David, any surprises you're doing, you're what you're doing now, it would be very easy to be envious because you're living, you're living the dream. I mean, you're doing what you love writing. You love the outdoors and you've, you found a way to bring the two together. However, as you look back in your career, the trajectory, any surprises, anything you would tell your younger self? Yeah. You know, I think, I think the main thing would just be, you know, don't, don't be afraid to take risk. You know, I'm, I'm here where I'm at because I wasn't afraid to kind of take, take a leap and then kind of take the risk and, and, and go out on my own and try that. You know, I think it's very easy to try to follow the conventional, again, kind of nine to five or those, those parameters that society and, and culture sets out and those jobs that are offered. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's, if that's what you want to do. But if you don't, I would say make your own way, you know, find out uh, what you love and then, and then go do that. You know, I did spend years in newspapers and, and doing PR and, and while it was great, it wasn't, it wasn't this, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the dream job, like you say. So I think when you do kind of throw caution to the wind and take that risk, you know, there's certainly, it's a risk reward situation. And I'm I'm very fortunate that it's gone as well as it has thus far, but yeah, I would just say, be willing to kind of, to take the road less traveled sometimes because oftentimes it's, it's a really sweet trip and you, you get to see some pretty awesome stuff along the way. No doubt about that. Now looking forward, I mean, you're, you and I are hopefully going to see each other up at the OWAA's uh, annual conference in Casper in May. And what are your perhaps future goals? I mean, you're now a member. I'm a new member as well. I get to podcast with a lot of really cool people doing a lot of real cool stuff. And I'm hoping that's going to continue and grow from there. What are your thoughts about joining this organization? Or, or actually a great question is how did you find them? How did you discover OWAA? 
Yeah. So exactly about a year ago, I went to the, the outdoor retailer show. The, I guess, I guess it was last summer. It was the summer show OR in the summer. And it was kind of like just the pandemic is still kind of put a damper on things, but I went down. It's unfortunate. It's, it's in Denver. So I went down to Denver. It's not too far from me. And I actually met Ted there. There's the president of the OWA. And we sat down and had a conversation. I introduced myself and talked to him. And, and that's, that's how I first initially kind of got introduced to the organization. And then coming out of the, the OR, I came home and, and did a little bit more research and, and talked to him on the phone and kind of followed through with it. And yeah, eventually decided it, it was a good opportunity for me. And, and yeah, became a member. And that was right before the conference in Vermont. So unfortunately I was, I was unable to to attend that conference, but I'm looking forward to one up north in Casper here soon. So yeah, hoping to, uh, to, to make it to that one. But yeah, that's how I initially kind of got introduced to the organization. Very good. Very good. And, and by the way, just a little correction there, Ches is the executive director and, and the president, it's Christine Peterson. She's a real cool former journalist, just like yourself. How do you see taking this this information, which you're going to learn through OWAA, perhaps this expertise you have with the, the product reviews and just writing features about experiences, where do you see going with this career of yours? How is it going to continue to evolve? Yeah, I think I'd like to continue, obviously, writing, meeting more people, hopefully expanding some of my my publications. I do have some some stories in mind that I really would like to write that are that are a little bit bigger in nature and a little bit grandiose. So for instance, I have I, I really want to do a through hike of the Colorado Trail here in Colorado and actually write about that for for a publication and do a kind of a more in depth feature. And I think that would be awesome because I think the Colorado Trail is often overlooked. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people uh, don't know, again, don't know how to like do that. So I can help kind of provide the information and resources on how to do a hike like that, a backpacking trip like that. So things like that, I think that there's still a lot left that I, you know, I'd like to, I, I had plans, the pandemic actually kind of put a damper on this, but I had plans to go to Costa Rica here soon and, and hopefully do uh, some fishing, maybe do some fishing stories out of there. So there's always another adventure. And if I can continue to write about it and people like to read it, then, you know, I'll keep doing it as long as it, as long as it keeps rolling. So like I said, so far it's been a, a fun, a fun time. So I'm hoping to just kind of keep the momentum going and, and continue yeah, writing about the things that I love that, that other people love as well. And that is a, that's a career and a, a life well lived. And I think as you had described it earlier about people just you know, throw caution to the wind, just do it. I mean, that's what it takes is just explore, continue to grow, evolve, learn. And that's, that's the best part about this, this journey that we're on. David, it, oh, I know there was one other question. You know, you talked about, you know, for the individuals who want to get into the space, just do it, throw caution to the wind, do, do your homework. Any other insights mm -hmm. that you would want yeah. to share? <laughs> with our listeners about if they want to begin this path, like maybe not exactly what you did, but what adv further advice would you give to them so that they can continue to be, take chance, look at comfortable living a little bit on the edge, taking those chances, leaning in. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. You know, I, one, one piece of advice that I had when I was younger that always stuck with me and after graduating school, I was considering going on and doing more, more college or more, more schooling, graduate school, something of that nature. And, and somebody once told me a byline is better than any class. And that's something that really stuck with me. I think that, you know, there's tons of careers out there and, and there's a lot of different ways to do it, but with, with writing, it's just, it's just doing it. You know, that's mm -hmm. how you get better by writing, by getting published. Don't fear rejection, you know, for every I'm sure, you know, at every pitch that goes out, there's, you know, uh, 10 that don't get right. accepted. So it's just, it's just persistence. It's believing in yourself. It's having the, you know, just the, the fortitude to, to keep going, even if things sometimes don't seem like they're, they're going to pan out, you know, just, just keep writing. And again, if it's something you love and 
and you enjoy it, then, then that in and of itself sometimes is, is enough of a reward. So yeah, I would say just, just, yeah, get out there and, and try to get, the, get those bylines. And, and that doesn't, I, I'm not advocating working for free. I know that there's some publications that are like, oh, we'll give you exposure. I right, am I, one of those writers. No. I, you know, you, you have to pay as what we're worth. You have to pay like with photography as well. You have to pay for, for our work. So I'm not saying, you know, get out there and do it for free, but you know, you know, get out there and, and get your work in front of people, get those bylines, you know, start your own website, you know, publish your work. And, and yeah, there's, there's, there's readers out there who will, who will follow good, good writing. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that too, is just don't let the nose get in the way and mm -hmm. just keep at it. And, and I think that's where like a community with like the OWAA getting used to them. I mean, this yeah. is where I think organizations like that are so integral to our successes because you're around a lot of, a lot of other people that perhaps they've done the things that you're thinking of doing. So there's a, there's a coaching mentoring opportunity there. There's also collaborative mm -hmm. opportunities and that's, that's how you grow. And you, it's not, you can't just sit in the comfort of your home, hoping that things are going to happen. Right. So it's good, good right. networking. David, it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast. I hope you have been enjoying yourself. I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. I'm going to really look forward to some uh, good drinking when we get up to Casper later this yeah. year. <laughs> if our listeners would like to learn more about you and your work, where are the best places for them to go? Yeah. So my website is davidyoungcommunications.com. And that has all of my uh, contact information. It has all of my, my portfolio, all my writing, all my information is on there. So davidyoungcommunications.com is certainly the best way to, to kind of check me out. And then I also am active on um, Twitter and LinkedIn. And uh, yeah, we'll provide those links, like you said, and people can also connect with me there on, on those networks too. So yeah, those are the best ways to, to connect with me. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you so much for joining me today. Wonderful episode. And uh, I'm like, okay, how do I get to Colorado? I mean, I could drive there, <laughs> but it yeah, just come it, on out. It's, uh, yeah. So you, you, you just have to bear with me again. So I, I, I need to, I'm working up. I, I don't know if I'm ready for the, the back country though, that, you know, the, the sunset in the, these, by these pristine glacial, glacial lakes that sound very, very nice. Very nice. So and you'll, but you'll share some pictures, but yeah, hopefully and, it'll and, happen. You yeah. Know? Good. Definitely. Listen, stay yeah, on the line. Good. We're going to do a quick close and you can, you're not going to have a final chat. Okay. All right. Okay. Folks, what a wonderful episode. I, I don't know about you, but I'm like, I got to get out to Colorado and I mean, just you know, the, the, really the, the pleasure of meeting David through our membership in OWAA and just in learning more about his work by visiting his website, davidyoungcommunications.com and just really just, you know, everything from, you know, whatever sport. And, and, if, and I didn't really think about this at the time, but Colorado, it's almost like the perfect state. He probably knows this it's like a best kept secret. You have all the seasons there. You have summer, winter, fall, spring and in every season there's opportunity for sport what doesn't matter what you're doing and and for folks like me obviously an opportunity for photography and really should be a a spark for any of us to get out and explore so whether you're in colorado or some other state find out what's what's available to you to get out and enjoy yourself and he also, you know, provided a lot of great insights for individuals who, you know, perhaps they're interested in writing and they, they want to begin to get into this outdoor space or they have a passion for, you know, a subject matter that's, you know, special to them. There's opportunities if you go out there and look. And so don't, you know, start Google searching, talk to people who are doing the things you love to do. And as David had said, follow your passion. And if it seems like there's a little bit of a roadblock, okay, it's a roadblock. Figure out how to get around it and keep moving forward. Keep leaning in, ask good questions. And you never know where you're going to end up. And we, what we saw from David today is, you know, he took this love of writing, PR, and especially this love of just the outdoors 
and has turned this into a very successful career. And it's going to be exciting to see where he goes as well. So again, do check out David and his work on davidyoungcommunications.com. It's the website. We'll provide the backlinks and we'll also provide the backlinks to his LinkedIn and Twitter social sites as well. As for us, you can find us on OutdoorAdventureSeries.com. We now have our podcasting platforms. They're, on, they're, they're getting set up as we speak. We are on Buzzsprout, which then connects to all the major podcasting platforms. Right now, you can find us on Amazon Music and Spotify. We'll be up on Google and on Apple in, in a not-too-distant future. So definitely, there's going to be ways to find us. We'll have a Outdoor Adventure Series Facebook page as well as a LinkedIn page as well. Folks, we hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Go out there, have a phenomenal day. Uh, Dave and I and are recording this episode on a weekend or Friday, so we're going to go enjoy our weekends. And I hope you do the same. Be safe. Wear your mask if it makes sense. Practice social distancing if it makes sense. Take care of yourself and the community. And we will see you on a future episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Take care now.